Hey guys, the episode you're watching is actually a stock footage episode, therefore some of the shameless plugs aren't actually correct on it. Therefore, go to facebook.com slash music ninja mat, that is our main hub for everything. Go over to Twitter and go to at music ninja mat, use the hashtag comic comments and ask us a question and we'll give you a shout out and go into the description below. There are details of all our competitions there and the playlist for comic comments so you can see any episode that you like. Hey guys and welcome to another edition of Comic Comments. I just realised how tired I look. It's ridiculous. <laughs> This is take a thousand of uh, of this beautiful episode. We've got another story from the vault for you. This was actually recommended to me uh, by Pete. It's his specialist subject and it's something I'm not overly familiar with, but something I greatly enjoyed and I'm definitely into now. And we're doing Inhuman Genesis, which collects the first six issues of Inhuman. And I always get confused because there's Inhuman, Inhumanity, Inhumans, we now have Inhumans, Attilan Rising, there's so many different ones but I believe this is kind of like the newest one. They never have years on these. Oh, well I mean, because it says 2000, oh, first printing 2014. So yeah, new. Really, we're just going to uh, go ahead, I think, and just jump straight into this nice flowing story. So as always, I'm Matt. And I'm Pete. And this is Inhuman Genesis. No, 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 no. So this is written by Charles... Charles Ard? <laughs> so this is written by Charles Zool. Uh, it's drawn by Ryan Stegman and Joe Maduria. My pronunciation's probably off, but Ryan Stegman I've heard of, and you were saying you actually really like this art. Yeah, this is this is my favourite comic book art ever. I just love it. We were also discussing the fact that you have this, you have Volume 2, which runs alongside the Axis storyline. Issues 12, 13, 14, which weren't released in graphic novel form, and there's a annual and a special which I haven't read yet. But we were kind of discussing if we think there'll be another graphic novel. I'd like to think there will be because there have been graphic novels made up of like three or four issues. But then Pete said he found them all on eBay anyway for like a fiver. So oh, yeah. Yeah. eBay's amazing for comic books. Like it's ridiculous. I swear we always sound like we're just advertising eBay. Yes, eBay. <laughs> it's because I'm just fishing for sponsorship at this point. Well, we're in Norway. We're not in Norway. <laughs> it's set in Norway. It starts in Norway with this guy called Christian, who is hitting on some girl and then gets beaten up by her boyfriend. He's not flirting with her. He says, I was doing her a favour by talking to her at all, the ugly little thing. Well. He's just basically being a... I don't know, he's like, just being... Straight away, I was like, I hope this guy's our main character. Because he's a dick. <laughs> And then you find out that there is this cloud thing that's um, flying towards this town. He steps outside and gets caught in the cloud and shouts no. And then that's how the story starts. To give it a bit of context, Black Bolt is missing mm -hmm. during the events of this. And he is like in a desperate kind of plan he releases what they refer to as, yeah, the tea cloud, which is... He releases a tea bomb yeah. which creates the tea cloud, which is flying around Earth, just turning people into inhumans. And then Attilan fell, Black Bolt's missing, and then Queen Medusa is just looking for everyone. Because doesn't he just make the cloud? Because Black Bolt's always that kind of like... He's just scared that inhumans will not be accepted, so he kind of is like, well, if we... If we have a decent number of us, then we'll be, like, uh, a I part think... of society kind of thing. I think so. I think it's explained by the lineage. Terogenesis is 
deadly to humans, isn't it? Um, oh no, it's not. No, it's it not. doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't affect, affect normal them. people, but you get it's it's weird because it's like people with enough of the kind of inhuman gene in them are able to go fully through the transformation. Yeah. Okay, so basically, all throughout the Inhumans' existence, Inhumans and humans have not been able to do the do. I can't remember what I said that. Do the do? Do you mean do the deed? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We're keeping it PG, guys. Inhumans don't turn anybody who has been a partner with a human and created this contaminated child because rules and stuff and it also sometimes creates like these monstrous inhumans that yeah. they don't like so they just kill off straight away and it just devolves the inhuman bloodline so now all of these humans only have like half inhuman dna so some of them get turned into monsters some of them don't get turned into anything and just die because they don't have enough inhuman in them, but they have enough to cocoon. Yeah. And all this stuff. It's not good, but that's why the inhumans never let anybody go inhuman. Yeah, Christian is picked up by our character Lash, who's like not... Again, it's one of those stories where it's like, he's not the main villain. He's like the first villain. He's like the mini-boss. Yeah, we kind of have two in this story. Mm. He's just kind of pissed that the T-Cloud ever happened because he, he's a strong believer in the non-contaminated bloodline. So you have Eldrak, which is an inhuman that's a, like a living door. Yeah, he got turned into this teleporting... This portal that is attached... To Attilan. But yeah, Medusa, as we said, her quest is just to find Black Bolt, so she believes, like, this will help. And instead, she gets sent somewhere completely different, which introduces uh, an, another one of our big new. I suppose humans. he's like the main character of this story. Yeah. He's like the main hero. And it's this guy called Dante. And Medusa's hot the whole way through this. Yeah, she is. Soup does her justice. Yeah, I mean, Dante's backstory is really kind of simple, is that his mother's ill and his sister's pregnant and he's just like, he just wants to provide for them and that's who, who he is. This guy Christian, who went through the mists, he turns into this, this big monster. So Lash just kills him straight away. Dante's sister is not affected by the tea cloud at all. Dante's mother is hit with the tea cloud but isn't able to make it out of cocoon form and dies and then yes. Dante actually cocoons. Yeah, and he's got enough to actually be inhuman. Yeah. And as soon as he breaks out of his cocoon, he sees Lash, blames him for his mother's death, and they and turns into like this living fire. This is where Medusa ends up turning up to fight Lash and save Dante and Dante's sister. A running theme for Dante is, yeah, he really cannot control his powers and he's, it's kind of like scary for him, the idea that he can't put himself out, so he needs to be trained in New Attilan to like, how to control his powers. And Medusa's also nice enough to be like, yeah, your sister can live in the city as well and we'll take care of her. Yeah, so the first time that he can't control his powers, Medusa has to smother his flames out with her hair. And then the second time, Gorgon just knocks him straight out. Cap's just there to kind of offer his help because Attilan has fell and the Inhumans are going to need all the help they can get. Medusa's not that much of a dick leader that she's like, no, fuck you, I don't need... She's not like Odin, who's just like, fuck it, I don't need help. So it's, and there's like mutual respect and suspicion, I would say, between Cap and Medusa. Cap and Medusa show up at Central Park, where there's this big fight going on between AIM and some of Medusa's inhuman guards, soldiers, things. And they're fighting over this part of Attilan that has fallen in the middle of Central Park. Cap and Medusa are just badass and save everyone and Medusa takes down this huge ship with her hair. Yeah, I love it because they make such a big deal out of it. They're like, what a Mark 9, those things are huge. And all the AIM 
guys are like, oh, you're fucked now. And then she's just like, in like two panels, is just like, no. Medusa then, she makes like a big announcement and she basically says that she's not going to be like, if you're inhuman, you have to come here. We will protect you. She's just kind of saying like, New Attilan is open to anybody. Because obviously a lot of people who are getting turned don't even know what's happening to them. So she's letting them know that there is a place for them to come and be safe and learn what's happened to them. I was finding it quite interesting reading this. There's a lot of ideas in this that I feel have made its way into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because obviously Inhumans are like, in season two, became a massive part. Yeah. It's Inhumans related, I suppose, but I think that was a great way to introduce them. Yes. Inhumans are so a very complicated characters, and I love that we're getting their backstory. Like, I'd love to just let's jump into an Inhumans movie, and it's like, okay, we know who they are, where they come from, and everything. Yeah. Let's meet the royal family and just crack on with it. Um, you can talk about lineage because you like it. I do like Lineage. Yes. Lineage shows up, and of course he's our nice devilish friend from uh, Original Sin. The fact that he just wears a suit, and he's that kind of guy that puts on a suit, and he's like, damn, I look, you know, I'm so suave. And he's like, the thing is, he's the bad guy you, you can't help but love, because he is just this sly, smooth-talking, like, he doesn't hide the fact that he's a dick. Yeah, he embraces it. Yeah. Lineage shows up to tell Medusa that he's got information about Black Bolt and offers to help. I love how he's just like, hey, Mrs. Bolt. They kind of say, like, that's she's Queen Medusa, and he's like, yeah, not really. She's not my queen. Yeah. And we also see, like, Lash is recruiting his own new humans. The difference really between him and Medusa is Medusa's like, everyone's welcome, whereas Lash is like, no, I'm... I will keep some of you, everyone else I'm just going to kill. And he picks up Jason, and Jason is another one of our main characters who's a new human. Because mm -hmm. we're basically being, like, we're very used to the royal family of inhumans, you know, Lockjaw, Blackmore, Medusa. So these just, we're getting a look at, like, a whole new generation of them, mm. which is cool. Jason's got, like, these rocks on his face, which is a dead giveaway of his powers. He can control rocks. But he can't control sand or dirt, which confused him, but he just kind of accepted it. And then they give him a really stupid name. What is it? It's like Corvus Stax, I think. But he doesn't keep that for long. So no, he's that's... not a fan of that name yeah. at all. Orlam, which is where Lash is taking his inhumans. And there's like quite a big family of them that he's talked into. Like The big idea that he has is like, yeah, Medusa's the bad guy. And he manages to convince so many of them of that fact. And then we see Dante again, who is now called Inferno. And what I love is the fact that they address, like, it's so on the nose, Dante's Inferno. Because so many superheroes get given names, and you can just imagine the writers like, that's so cool, that's awesome. And everyone reading it is like, what were you thinking? <laughs> Whereas this is, it addresses the joke in mm. itself, which I thought was good. And yeah, he's got his own fireproof suit. and Yeah, and he's got, mostly got control of his powers now. And um, he even asks, is he a superhero now? And Gorgon says that's up to him. Jason, yeah. rock man. He looks amazing when he's getting like all powered up. He just looks badass. Because obviously Jason chucking rocks at him and he says, Rocks, I've sparred with the thin boy. You'll learn the same lesson he did. Rocks break. But and that's why I love Gorgon. Gorgon is great in this story. Basically, Medusa recruited some Inhumans and Dante, who was the new human, and they all went to, what was it, Orolon? Yeah. To fight Lash and bring these new, new humans back. And Lash is kind of just shows how careless he is when he's just like shooting energy blasts and one almost hits Jason and Gorgon actually steps in and saves him. So that's like the realisation for him that like, uh, so Lash actually just doesn't give a shit yeah. really. They don't defeat Lash as much as she's like, look, just stay out my way. She's like, I'm not going to do anything to you, but there will be serious fucking consequences if you don't simmer down. Yeah, we're introduced to the reader in China, who's a character I've never seen. No? 
No. Oh, he was part of the old Disney movies. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was quite a big part of it. Basically, anything that the reader reads comes true. So the other Inhumans thought, like the Inhuman royal family, thought that he was so powerful that they actually like removed his eyes. But he learnt to read Braille, so he's got these little cards on his side, and when he reads them, he can read like freeze and freeze time or back and move back time or anything. That's cool. Yeah. We also get a look at like Thor's visiting New Attilan and it's just look how cheery and merry a place it is. I don't know why I thought this was great. It's just because Thor's meets Dante and he's like, what's your name? And Dante's like, uh, uh, Thor. And he's like, oh, what a coincidence. I'm also Thor. And you're just like, oh my God. I thought it was great. <laughs> Do you know what I love about this story is I actually like Thor. Usually when Thor turns up in any story, I'm like... He's just a bit of a dick normally, isn't he's he? He's boring. Like, the, oh, the way he's written. Yeah, yeah. But I really like Thor in this, so that was nice. And then it turns out that there are these snipers all targeting Thor, Medusa, and Dante. And they take this shot, and then we don't get to see what happens for another couple pages. We get shown China again, where there's this soldier who's breaking into this house to find a new human. And as soon as he goes in, the house just explodes. So the soldier tells everybody to fire, and then Rita shows up and freezes time and saves this pressure manipulator, which is what their power is. So then we're shown the snipers again, and all the shots. Medusa's hair catches the bullets. Thor's hammer blocks them. Dante just incinerates them. And this servant, Elijah, she gets shot. And it turns out that the snipers are all inhuman. And they're kind of like, this is bullshit, like... They blame Medusa for being turned into Inhumans. Yeah. She shows them a lot of kindness and kind of talks them down. It's like I said, this is why I like Medusa as not only a character, but as a ruler. Because most people who are like kings and queens in Marvel are just assholes. Yeah, you'd think, you'd like, think that she's going to execute them, but no, she just invites them to live in New Attilan. Namor is a classic example. So yeah, like, he's a dick. Dick. So, yeah, re- the people that were with Lash, they are now in New Attilan and they're on the side of Medusa. Jason's backstory is his real family is in Africa. He was clearly adopted. Yeah, they did this swap. So, there was a town of people who had inhuman blood, but not enough to actually turn inhuman, like it would just kill them if they ever saw the mists. And then there was a town of inhuman-ish humans in Africa, and they like swapped a child. So Jason came to the Americans and some kid went to Africa. Jason's like whole family was killed when the tea cloud hit. Mm. So he's a bit upset to say the least, and Inferno is just kind of trying to cheer him up. The unspoken turns up, he's a creepy looking. Again, this is a character I'm not familiar with, apart from the fact that he was the king before Black Bolt was. Yeah, and he he was a dick, and his power is to his power is that he can get any power he wants from the Terrigen crystals. So he just kept using them up and keeping them all for himself, and he's just a bad ruler. He turns up and he's like, "Marry me, Medusa, and we'll rule together." But his name was stricken from the book from their history books so he's it was, the un- it was struck him from the world itself yeah. like they can't physically say his name yeah even in this book there's just like uh sensor bars every time they actually call him by his proper name what, what do you call a drummer with half a brain overqualified ha because uh inferno is a drummer he's a musician obviously medusa turns down the proposal and but he he's kind of like yeah i expected as much mm. He also offers five new Inhumans from China that he's just recruited. But the unspoken, the only reason he's not completely cast out is because he's like, well, I, I know where Black Bolt is. So he's put into, I, what? It's Gorg- a cell, but it's a nice yeah, cell. Yeah, Gorgon's kind of like, you know Attilan, and yeah, there are, there are worse places you could be. The unspoken's like, I do know Attilan, and there's a secret door in the cell that leads to... It's a vault of secret Terrigen crystals that he's, like, had stored away in Attilan forever. 
Jason and Inferno were actually they were went to a bar, so mm-hmm. they're like off of newer to him at this point, just got out there to clear their heads and they meet Naja, mm-hmm. who she's just like, I overheard you talking and I want to be safe as well. I want to go to New Attilan. We were discussing before as well. Naja is actually who a lot of people thought Raina was going to turn into in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. All through the first season, Raina wanted. Raina respected this guy who she thought had the power to see the future. So in the second season, she got the power to see the future because Terra Genesis. In general, it'll either give you your greatest wish or your greatest fear. And the reason it turned Sky into Quake is because it reacts to the environment. So, because they were underground, they were surrounded by rocks in a rock temple. Obviously, she got Quake powers. Yeah, but then it's kind of... Medusa is like, well, thanks for leading us to uh, the... Terrigen crystals, mm. and she's kind of, you know, because you're like, Medusa's not stupid. But then the new humans that the Unspoken brought launch an attack, enough so so that he is able to absorb the crystals and give himself just crazy, crazy power. Then we're kind of, because now we have our little band of Jason, Inferno, and Naja who need to try and get back onto the island and save the day. They're like our little team that we follow. Who is that Jason on the front? Not Jason Inferno. Yeah, that's done. Because it looks more like Lash. I know, it's just the art style. That issue um, just ends with this city belongs to the unspoken. They get back onto the island because Naja can fly, which is revealed to be, you know, another one of her talents. What are her powers exactly? She has flight. She has camouflage. I'm not sure, it just kind of gets revealed as it goes on. Yeah. Yeah. When she gets afraid, she changes colour, she starts like glowing. Mm. But yeah. later on, she's able to actually turn invisible. And she figures out how to work her camouflage based on her emotion. So Inferno finds his sister and the doctor for the Inhumans, Venatos. Mm-hmm. And then we see the Unspoken in his throne with Terrigen Crystals by his side and in a goblet, because as if he wasn't being dramatic enough. And he's got Medusa hanging in these weird chain things, even her hair is chained up. But this doctor guy, he's like, he looks so frail and so old, and yet he's walking towards the guards and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm needed in surgery. And he just kicks their ass and you're like, that's fucking cool. The doctor is uh, sadly killed as well by the Unspoken, which is sad because he was a cool character. It makes Inferno angry, so his powers get a bit stronger because that tends to be how things work. And as Inferno is kind of leading the charge, as Jason can control... He can control rocks, so he just picks up all the Terrigen crystals, smashes them into each other and destroys them. Yeah. So the Unspoken can't get any new powers. Because the Unspoken kind of says, without without Terrigen, like, what's the point? And he just kind of sits and feels sorry for himself. So then there's this big fight between Inferno and the Unspoken. Inferno basically burns out all of the Unspoken's powers, but he also burns himself out. So they're both lying unconscious. And then the Unspoken sat in his cell and Lineage is kind of like... Lineage has a tiny bit of Terrigen Crystal and he's like, right, you're gonna, we're gonna talk, we're gonna have a nice chat and sort things out. It's revealed that Black Bolt isn't dead, but he probably wishes he was. And the final shot is just a Black Bolt in chains as Maximus is stood above him. It's, it probably sounds a lot more all over the place. As, because when you're trying to explain it and jump in and out of parts of the story, but actually it's one of, one of the things I loved about it was how nice flowing it really mm. was. Enjoyed, the characters were all very likeable, the story itself was good, and it, it feels self-contained enough, because obviously you have like the cliffhanger at the end with Black Bolt, but it's kind of like... A good way to not only introduce our characters, but show like their first adventure together, sort of thing. So I definitely recommend this. For me personally, it's kind of just 
getting more into the Inhumans and understanding more about them ready for the film. I'm so excited for the film. Yeah, I think the only news they've really got is they want Vin Diesel to be Black Bolt. That would be good. I mean, he's already Groot, but... Yeah, but you can't tell that he's Groot. Yeah. So it's fine. And Black, Black Bolt doesn't speak. speak. Yeah. I'd recommend it, but obviously I would, because I love Inhumans. But I think it's it's a really good story, it flows really well, it's got great art, so uh, you should pick it up. And the second one, and, and the rest of it as well. We'll probably talk about the second one at some point. Yeah, more than likely. As always guys, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed. Subscribe for all future content. And leave us a comment down below. What did you think of Inhuman Genesis? Have you read it? Would you read it? And is there anything that we've missed out that you felt we probably should have covered? Like, just give us extra info as well. Mm. Uh, if you've got any interesting anecdotes about the Inhumans. That's going to be all for this one. We've been rep representing Inhumankind. What do they call it? Because we're mankind, so it's Inhumanity. Is that their word for... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Mm. So we will see you in the next one. So it's bye from me. Bye from me.